Welcome to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast, where we aim to give swimming the coverage and publicity it deserves. Every week, we celebrate the sport we love with amazing special guests and topics from around the swimming pool. And now, here are your hosts, Scott and Dan. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. Episode number two this week, we said we were ramping things up for Tokyo and we were not kidding. I'm back with Dan. How are you doing, Dan? Yeah, very good. I'm actually quite excited for this week because yeah. we've got three or four podcasts in in this week. And yeah, like you say, we're ramping up towards Tokyo and uh, the excitement is now starting to set in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So over the past few months, we've covered a lot about British swimming. It's all kind of winding down on the racing front over here as they prepare for Tokyo. But elsewhere around the world, there are Olympic trials happening. And we thought being a swimming podcast, we have to talk about them. We have to cover them. And today we are starting with the Aussie trials, which have just finished. And in truth, they blew the doors off their trials. It was incredible for many, many different reasons. Oh man, I mean, it was so good. I mean, I was watching on Amazon Prime every morning for the finals. Um, Australian records being broken literally all over the place. They were swimming so well. And if I remember right, there was uh, nine world leading times as well, which is just incredible. Yeah, at the point that we are recording this, there are nine world leading yeah. times. We have to remember US trials are going on right now. There are some fast swims being swum over there. We will talk about those once those trials are done. Don't worry, a review podcast is coming for those. But yeah, Aussie trials are done. We thought we would give you kind of the standout swims of the meet, what names to keep an eye on for Tokyo, some people who missed their big events in Tokyo. There are some talking points to talk about. Mm. But before we get into the swimming in the pool, Dan, there's a one, one massive topic we need to cover because Amazon Prime and swimming are together and oh my God, did they kill it? Oh man, it's a wonderful mixture. I mean, I remember tweeting about it and just like, it's flawless. Honestly, every single bit of it. I mean, I could list so many things. You got the underwater footage, which was absolutely incredible. You had the, the experts panel. So mm. you've obviously got the, the former para international swimmers. You've got Grant Hackett, who I think was back in Melbourne, I think. Not actually there, but, you know, he had one like a I video call like or whatever. There. It felt like it was so good, wasn't it? Really, mm. really good. And uh, although we didn't speak very much, Grant, he he's so wise, so knowledgeable, especially when the 1500s are going on. Um, no, really good. I mean, there's extra things, but uh, that they were the top two things, definitely. Yeah, there's a few things that we, we kind of want to take a deep dive into, why this is a positive move, move for swimming and kind of what we can take away from this, whether there's a route finally that swimming might have a broadcaster which is putting money into it. I know over in the US, there's NBC. They obviously put a lot of money into swimming, but elsewhere around the world, there's nothing. There's really not much. So as we're going to take a dive into the positives, but before we do that, I do have one one tiny negative before everyone asked British swimming to put it everything that they do on Amazon because it was done really well. Mm. And that's it is behind a paywall. It's a very minor con- inconvenience from my point of view. I, th- I think it's so good. But yes, you're right. It is by behind a paywall, but the value you get for Amazon with the deliveries and all that sort of stuff. Yes. Um, so that is worth it. That's kind of the caveat to it. So you never really want to put a sport which has is trying to grow its audience behind a paywall. Once you're established like football, I mean, rugby's behind a paywall as well, I guess, on BT. But yep, s- yep. sports like cricket, that struggled to grow because it's on a paywall behind a paywall in Sky Sports. Same with golf. I wouldn't mm. say there's too many people I know who are sitting down to tune into golf unless they are really, <laughs> really invested. And Hardcore fans, yeah. Yeah, you don't want swimming to be, become like these sports and get stuck and struggle to grow its audience because it does need to grow. But then you think about how many people probably have Amazon Prime listening to this podcast? Probably loads of people. you got it for your deliveries. I've got it. I've barely watched anything on it. I just have it for deliveries. So then yep. it becomes less of a paywall. And then we can start talking about the positives of Amazon. Yes, 
uh, pretty much echo everything you've just said. Uh, I think <laughs> a, a, lo- a lot of people have Amazon now, like you say, for deliveries, and it's there for it's a bit, bit like Netflix as well with the videos and, mm. and the films and stuff like that as well. Um, I, just, I think it's great, and if hopefully if Amazon can stay with swimming, mm. then I just think there's only one way to go, and that's and that's up. Especially if it's the, the production level was the same as what it was for mm. Australian Trials, then oh say, yeah, really exciting. If, it felt like a lot of money had been thrown at it. And I'm not sure if it had, but the way that it was done was on a professional scale that I have never seen swimming covered before. Well, so I was it, saying to it, you, it felt like a NFL coverage. Yeah, I was saying to you when I was watching it, like every single bit of it, I enjoyed all, all of it. I enjoyed all of it. Even <laughs> the, like the, the gaps in between races, we were moaning about it in Glasgow, I remember. It's just silent usually and staring at a pool. Yeah, just because the, the camera was just staring at the pool and not doing much. Whereas the Australian trials, they had uh, pre-production interviews with the swimmers. They had, um, for example, during the 800s and 1500s, the distance events, you say you get bored. They had do, interviews. Yeah. They, they have interviews during that swim of mm. the swimmers in the water with their pre-interviews before the competition or with the coaches or with the parents. It, just, it keeps you engaged more. And that's, mm. honestly, it was so good. Really, really good. Yeah, there's a few things that I really want to talk about as well, which is Mm. the graphics. And I'm not talking about kind of bringing up times or anything like that. The most important thing for me was the para swimming and the fact that they had qualifying times for each individual lane. Yeah, so simple, so effective. The only issue with that is that they couldn't have the world record line. So they had Ben Hans swimming in the 100 backstroke, I think it was right at the end. And they wanted to find out if he hit the world record, but they couldn't put that red line in because of all the other graphics for the individual lanes. Um, maybe that's a thing to improve on, I don't know. But at the same time, unbelievable. As soon as I saw it, I was like, wow, this is mm. it's almost revolutionary, but it's so simple, you know? Incredible. Such a simple thing to do. And uh, like you say, it's brilliant for para swimming, and I think it's much needed, honestly. Mm, I do. So, I mean, we could talk about Amazon all day. It was so good. If anyone hasn't seen it, go watch it. All of the live streams from Amazon are still all available on Amazon Prime. Um, I think they've even put up highlights on YouTube on their channel. Just for once, for once, as someone who's doing YouTube and doing media and creativity, to see it done so flawlessly was brilliant to see yeah i mean i've just remembered another thing where um bringing grant hackett back in uh before every major race of for example kate campbell in the 100 free they would do like a stroke analysis on her mm. and they like grant would pick up pick out four key points so like for example she's off the block because she's got like a she's quite tall six one but she makes up for it by having a strong powerful stroke and then she usually fades away the last 15 20 meters or so and mm. he's like bang on absolutely bang on and uh, just stuff like that i mean we we as watchers of swimming want to see that um mm. and i just think yeah every everything that the amazon did was pretty much nailed on so what are the next steps then because i don't know if british swimming have a deal with bbc that they can't get into bed with amazon maybe that's the case but if i if i'm wanting one event to join up with amazon over the next, let's let's say two years, because I'm sure it's going to take a while to sort this thing out. Mm. It's ISL. ISL yeah. is the most exciting form of swimming out there right now. We yeah. we fully believe that. So I basically think if ISL and Amazon joined forces, we could finally see some sort of change within swimming. We could see maybe a revolution slightly. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, maybe a slight rev- rev- revolution. That's a, an interesting word. Yeah, but I, I like the idea of them joining together. You might be right. It might take a good couple of years for that to happen. But um, I think ISL, because it's brand new, they're still trying to figure out what works, what doesn't. Mm. Um, and I know a lot of people don't like the the camera angles used at ISL because it doesn't show every lane and the spider mm. cameras used too much, for example. Whereas at Trials and Amazon, it's just... On the back sand, um, on the back row of the stand, and it's just watching that you can so you can see every swimmer. Yeah, simple stuff like that. Um, but hopefully, it does get to a point where they join forces because, yeah, I mean, ISL is the way forward, and obviously, swimmers, swimmers are taking part in ISL after Tokyo, which we were a little bit shocked at as well. So obviously, yeah. they're trying to push it as well, which uh, which is a good thing. So hopefully, it, it does take off. Yeah, yeah. So that's Amazon covered. 
not briefly at all. So I'm sorry about that. We did <laughs> ramble slightly, but honestly, I'm so excited for what the future might hold within swimming. I think Aussie trials have definitely given a preview of that. But should we should we jump into the races? Because like you said, nine world leading times at the trials, one world record at mm. trials. And I think that's the place to start. Kaylee McEwen, we put on our YouTube channel, we put a blackboard breakdown on. We thought she's going to be a future star, a future medalist. A world record coming at trials, though. 100 back. Wow. Oh, blown away by it, honestly. I didn't think... I think she was going to get close to it because she swam uh, 57.6, I believe it was, at the Sydney Open maybe a month or two ago. Mm. Um, so I thought she was going to get somewhere close to that sort of time. But I didn't think she was going to go a world record. I mean, that world record is pretty quick from Reagan Swift. Um, not, not hers anymore. She broke it by 0.1. Um, mm. Just a fantastic swim from her. And she's going to be an absolute medal threat not just in 100 back but other events as well oh yeah we're getting well let's get into her other events because she set the fastest time in the world in the 200 im she went a 208 yeah. one yeah, which I, I mean it's still some way off katinka hosu's record but that's the fastest time in the world by quite a distance this year it is yeah well abby woods on two nine isn't she so she's two nine two two nine two so a second ahead of abby um and we said that Abby is almost, well, you think that she's almost guaranteed a, po- a podium position now. And if you look at Kaylee McEwen, well, if that's the case, then she's going to be standing on the top of the podium with that sort of time. I, I, I think so. I really doubt that as good as a hundred back is that t- sort of time, when you put it into perspective of what everyone else is doing, that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. I mean, I, I think she goes faster than that at Tokyo. Of course, I think she might go to seven, six or seven, something like that. Mm. Um, so it's not quite the world record. That world record is very quick from Hosu. 206 mm. is mental time. Um, and a quick shout out as well to Siobhan Maria O'Connor, who's now recently retired, who also went 206 at Rio. Yeah. Just, just shows how good she is as well. Or was. Yeah, you, you just need to look around the world. And Katie McEwen's light, lighting sparks off everywhere in every race she does. And she's still what a second and a half behind what Siobhan used to do. So that's an incredibly fast British record that she's got. And I think yep, sport's yep. going to miss her. I think swimming is going to miss her. Well, she's a great role model for every youngster. I know she used to do lots of talks at um, Kainsham and other clubs that uh, are close to Bath in the vicinity. Um, yeah, great role model. And I wish her the best of luck with her future endeavours. But um, yeah, she's been a, a great servant to British swimming. Mm. Back to Kaylee though. She also qualified in the 200 meters backstroke. She just missed the world record here. Although that, I mean, we keep saying it, the Reagan Smith world records are bonkers and Kenny McEwen's getting close to them. I know. Well, what makes it even crazier is that both of them are still teenagers or is Reagan Smith 20. I think that's both 19, which is incredible. So they could be fighting it out for the next decade, potentially. Mm. Um, Fun. Which is which is Im- incredible. I mean, that time could go lower and lower, lower. It wouldn't surprise me if we see a 202, which is mental to think about. 202 for a 200 backstroke. That is insane. <laughs> but um, yeah, they could be battling out um, for, you know, like I say, for 10 years, a decade. It's just incredible. A quick shout out as well to Emily Seabum, who qualified for her fourth Olympic Games, aged 29, yep. both in the 100 back and 200 back behind Katie McEwen. I wasn't surprised by the 200. The 100? Yeah, Slightly I was surprised, surprised, that. surprised that Mina Atherton missed out. Slightly. Yeah. I mean, I've been um, bigging up Mina Atherton, especially with uh, doing so well at ISL. I think it was mm. the first season. She did so well at the ISL. Um, breaking a world record, actually, in the ISL for the short course 100 backstroke, I think it was. Um, yeah, that really surprised me. I thought she would get a definite second. But Emily Seabum just a veteran. I mean, you can't take anything away from her fourth Olympics, which is joint now with Liesl Jones and also Kate Campbell, which we'll get onto later on. Mm. Right. So another big standout swimmer from these meets that everyone definitely, definitely needs to pay attention to in Tokyo, because I think she's going to cause a massive shockwave through the sport. Really? Mm. Ariane Titmus. Now, where do you want to start? Which race? The four, the two, the eight? Oh, blimey. Well, I want to start with, oh boy, <laughs> they're both just <laughs> as good as each other. Let's go with the four because that was a surprise to me because I didn't think anyone could cause Ledecky any problems at Tokyo for 400, 800, 1500. But now that's that head to head for the 400 rate, 400 free, 
is mental. I mean, that's one of the big races to watch now at Tokyo because you just yeah. don't know who's going to win it. Um, so Titmus went a 356.9, which is only 0.44 off Ledecky's world record. That's how mm. close she got. Yep. Second fastest time ever. Um, end up being a 1.8 second PB as well, which mm. actually is probably the most mind boggling thing. Um, and as far as I heard, um, she only had a three day taper as well. <laughs> Which, I really hope that's a lie. I really well, we'll do see. because oh, you're going 0.4 for Ledecky. There's me complaining that Ledecky's making distance freestyle boring. Mm. That 400, nope, not boring anymore. Not anymore. That's a one race to watch out for because, yeah, I mean, before before these trials, you'd say Ledecky's won that, no problem. Mm. But now, coin flip for me, honestly. I mean, I think both of them went into their, their separate trials untapered, so it could go could go anyway it really could that's definitely a one to watch if you want an exciting head-to-head because they're going to be level the whole race pretty much it's just a straight race for the last 50 meters and then her other standout race was 200 meters freestyle now this one to me this was more impressive Mm. it really was because ledecky's quality and she's got close to her in the 400 brilliant but to go a 153 in the 200 meters freestyle and get and to get within touching distance of a record from Pellegrini that honestly I thought would last a lifetime to get that close at trials. Wow. I'll yes. just honestly, do you, do you have any words because I'm lost? Um, well, I was watching <laughs> it and all I could see was the, um, the qualifying time pretty much. I wasn't really interested in the world record time. Um, and when she touched the wall and saw a 153, it didn't really set in straight away. It's like, well, that's a pretty good time. Oh, wait, hang on a minute. That, that Pellegrini world record is a 152.9. That was a super suit time, yeah. which I said to you quite a while ago, that's one of the best world records and one that will probably stand for God knows how long. Um, that swim kind of proves to me that she's going to break that. I mean, it was mind blowing, mind blowing swim. I mean, if we're going off, I don't want to talk about it too much. If she's gone off a three day taper and she's going in low one fifty three, boy, she's going to break that world record. You know, I, I'm really shocked by the amount of world records that might potentially drop yeah. at Tokyo. I didn't think it would be like this, but yeah, that's, she had a great meet. She really did. Yeah, I think to put it into perspective, Dan, I know you're not going to enjoy me saying this, and I know a lot of our <laughs> listeners aren't going to enjoy me saying this. You've been tipping Freya for an outside medal chance. I have, yeah. Now Freya goes a 155 high, if I'm correct on her PB. 56 low, something around that region, yeah. Yeah. So that's a good two and a bit more seconds away from what Titmus is doing. And then you've got some Americans to throw into it. You've got Siobhan Horhey. This yeah, is I... the tar- this is the target for Freya to get to. I fully think she can get there, but it's going to take a few more years. Tokyo might be slightly too soon. Yeah, I was um, kind of in two minds. I was blown away by uh, Titmus's time. And then I actually messaged you saying, mm, I think the, uh, the, out- <laughs> the outside chance of Freya getting a medal now is pretty much gone. I mean, you never know. If she makes the final, she's got a lane, you've got a chance. Oh, yeah, definitely. You, but, um, definitely. But yeah, it's, it's looking pretty unlikely, which is unfortunate. But uh, it's going to be a great spectacle between, I assume, the deck is going to race it between her and uh, Titmus. And of course, like you say, Horhe and there's other swimmers as well. So Allegrini, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's going to be mental. I mean, it's also worth mentioning she broke the Australian record in their 800 meters freestyles. So she had three ridiculously good events. All three of them, she'll be going head to head with Ledecky. And finally, we have a competition to watch. Yeah. And what was really good, going back to Amazon a little bit with the underwater footage, you could see how balanced she was in the water. Um, even with the 800, which, of course, Grant was saying that you, you start burning towards the end and the, the technique starts to fade away a little bit Mm. but her technique was holding throughout the whole race her head was perfectly still unless she was breathing of course pulling underneath her everything was good about it and um she's definitely one to watch and it's surprising really that she's only 20 as well so she's got many years left in the game as well yeah yeah okay another name to pay attention to in tokyo kyle chalmers now he was a bit of a surprise winning the rio gold in the 100 meters freestyle very much now he's a name. He's a man to beat. Him and Dressel are kind of the class of the 100 meters freestyle field. But he, the first event he qualified for was the 200 meters free. I was slightly yeah. surprised to see him winning this. I mean, he won in a 145.4, which is a good second slower than what Duncan and Tom Dean did at British Trials. Yep. 
Um, so I don't really expect him to be a threat in the individual. But then you look at the relay team and you think, well, they actually had four swimmers under a 146, which is pretty mm. strong. That's pretty good. Oh, pretty strong. That's um, that's very strong. Yeah. I mean, um, I don't think it gets anywhere close to the British team, but I mean, touch wood. yeah, touch words. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I was kind of surprised the winning time of Chalmers was 145.4 was actually a PB for him, believe it or not. But I don't okay. see him as a 200-meter swimmer anyway. No. He's a more of a 100-meter swimmer. Um, the winning time wasn't very quick compared to like the British swimmers mm. and elsewhere. But yeah, the top four swimmers, sub-146, I mean, that's that's a podium team for that relay yes. for the four-way yep. two. Um, I suppose that's the biggest takeaway for that 200 free. But um, for Charles to be winning the 200 free, I know he won it last trials i believe or he wins at every national Commies, australian does all right, doesn't he? yeah um it's just strange actually i just mm. uh, especially with australia being a freestyle nation i mean you look mm. at all of the freestyle techniques and it's just flawless i was watching like yeah that's perfect it's pretty much perfect pretty much perfect. go down the, the whole um race of each lane and the, the technique is incredible and i just thought especially with thorpe being there you think someone would get close to that 144 region, you know, mm. but um, either way, I mean, it's going to be good for the, the, the relay for them anyway. Yeah. Well, while we're talking about good Australian techniques, so we talk about the hundred free that Chalmers mm. obviously won a 47 five, I believe yep, that's right. Lays down a very good marker ahead of Tokyo. Um, I kind of want to give a shout out to a man who didn't qualify, which is kind of weird, but Cam McAvoy, he has, the most beautiful freestyle technique going. You'll be happy he to know up- he, is, he is qualified, but for the four by one red relay, yeah. not for the individual. He came third, which was, yeah. I mean, he went under the qualification time, but he just got pipped to, to second. But you're right, his techniques, how do you explain it? That The high elbows over and under the water, mm. the powerful leg kick, the drive to his hip, the body rotation. He's like, if he's a prime, if you want to know how to do body rotation, watch him because he does yeah. have power to his hip than he so yeah i want you i want you to do a uh, a breakdown of his racing and his technique i know there's a video out there of his underwater like an underwater camera following him for a whole length mm. so I, I want you to break that down for everyone because it's just so good to watch so good to watch but Chalmers, 100 meters freestyle lay down a marker he'll be there or thereabouts in the final at tokyo i would have expected yeah, um, as far as I know, I don't think anyone <clears throat> ever defended the men's 100 free Olympic title before. So um, he would be the first to do it, which would be one a mean feat, let me tell you that, especially with uh, someone like Dressel mm. flying around. Yeah. yeah. Um, more standout swims. There's so many. We will cover There's... them all. 200 meters breaststroke on the guy's side. Zach's double T Cook goes to 206 28. Another one who tickled a world record. Mm. Now we said we've said so many times that it's going to take a two oh five to win the Olympic gold in two hundred meters breaststroke on the guy's side. I am leaning towards a two oh five to make the podium right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's yeah. some I fast mean, times. I definitely stand by a two oh five is what it's going to have to take to win Olympic gold. Um, and you might be right. It might take a 205 to actually get a medal full stop. Um, some fantastic swims. 206.2 is the second fastest time ever, I believe, behind mm. Trupkov. Um, and he looked good at Europeans as well. He did. Jeez, I mean, it's going to be a very interesting race. So it's a good tactical race where you go out quite steady and then you bring it back quite strongly. And then whoever's got the, the speed in the last 50 meters is going to win it pretty yeah. much. Um, yeah, fantastic swim. And we've got to have... I mean, the big talking point, massive talking mm. point. At the time, it was gutting. Literally, I was almost in tears watching it. Not going to lie to you. <gasps> I was in tears at the presentation when they interviewed yeah. oh, him afterwards. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Right. If you, if you don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about um, Matt Wilson, who was the former world record holder at this event. He tried at Australian Trials for Rio, just missed it by 0.1 or 0.2 or point something one. along those lines. 0.1, was it? And um, pretty much... It just repeated itself. He missed the qualification time by 0.1.2 again. And his face, oh man, it was gut-wrenching. Honestly, so gut-wrenching. There's, there's a bit of a backstory as well, which makes it even harder yeah. to kind of understand is Matt, unfortunately, a few days before trial, lost his grandmother. And to see him get selected on that final day when he hadn't hit the time and they said, you know what, go 
benefit of mm. the doubt will let will take you was just yeah. unbelievable and actually kind of restored some faith in swimming because I know do I know I'm not sure British swimming would be so lenient with their selection times yeah I mean trials notoriously for most countries is pretty cutthroat if you don't make that mm. qualification time you don't go but seeing her seeing as though he's a former world record holder and I think he was a world medalist as well uh, mm. a couple of years back um, just makes sense the, yeah they gave him the benefit of the doubt and actually you're right I think it has restored a bit of faith and you never know. You might go on and win gold. I mean, you just don't know because he's got the ability to do it. You see? Yeah. You've got to give him the benefit of that. That build up was horrible. I can't mm. imagine it. His mum wasn't able to get there because she stayed and sorted out funeral arrangements and she couldn't yeah. watch it. And my God, my God, it was, I don't know if anyone wants to cry a little bit tonight, go watch it. But it got yeah. me. It really got me. Um, and of course that, that interview that you're talking about at the end when he was selected, they, the interview of Gian Rooney, I think it was, where he was asking about his grandmother and he just couldn't speak. He was just I don't know how you ask up. those questions. I mean, yeah, we, I was... we, we invite people on the podcast and ask those questions. Oh, no, I couldn't ask someone that. No, I'm no, like, really I'm so difficult. sorry. But ultimately, really happy for him. Um, yes, I hope he does yes. really well at Tokyo. Um, he deserves it, honestly. He really he does deserve it. Um, yeah. Well, I don't know what, what else to say about it other than I'm going to cry, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so before we touch on what, two or three big points of note from the, the races, do you want to fly through some really impressive results for a few others? Yeah, there was actually quite a few, to be honest with you. I'll, qu- I'll go through them as quickly as possible. Brendan Smith in the 400 IM Australian record, 4.10.04. That's fast. Um, I, that is pretty good, isn't it? Uh, you had Matt Temple, again, with another fast time, 50.45 in the 100 fly which is the eighth fastest ever. Yeah. Mental. I mean, I was watching that race. It looked really good. And then, I mean, we're recording this on a Friday afternoon. So was it a half hour, hour before we've recorded this? Caleb Dressel has just gone a 50.1 at American Trials. Easy speed in the heats. In the so, heats, yeah. I mean, the hundred that looked really impressive from Matt Temple, and you're watching it just like, oh, maybe he's a threat for Tokyo. And now you're yeah. looking at it just like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that was exactly my thoughts at the time. I was like, 50.4. Whoa, that is pretty good going. I mean, that's on the same level as Milak. And you think, oh, whoa, pay up. And then Dressel does that, and you think, oh, well, never mind. Then maybe it's not as good <laughs> as it. But um, still a good swim, eighth fastest swim ever, although it's probably now ninth because Caleb has just oh no no because Caleb's got the world record Caleb's course. already got it yeah go on um, moving on other swims Mitch Larkin qualified for the 100 backstroke uh he did a 50.53.0 in the heat but then did a 53.4 in the final mm. uh, I mean it, it's good <laughs> but then he he kind of backed up a little bit with the the 200 IM where he went 156.2 now that is a pretty good time that's the yeah, second see. fastest it was the second fastest <laughs> year until uh, American Trials, Michael Andrew, who's just smashed it and gone a 155, I think it was. We'll talk about Michael Andrew on our podcast, which I believe is going to be Monday, US Trials. Yeah. Don't worry, we'll get into that. I have a lot to talk about that race. Yes, um, yeah. That was in semi-final as well. There's a final to come on that one. I know. Um, but yeah. Mitch Larkin, I was really surprised he dropped the two back because he's up there with the two best in the world with two back. I know it's a really competitive event and I was slightly surprised he chose the two I am over it. And then you watch the two I am and you're just like, okay, I get you. I get you. Yeah, There's a I mean, clash I, between both of them. I've always seen him as a backstroker. Of course, he's got the Australian mm. record for, I think it's both actually the one and the two. Um, I knew he was good at 200 I am, but I didn't realize he was this good. I mean, this is the same sort of level, give or take as Duncan Scott. And you think, well, yeah. well, if you're happy with Duncan Scott's time, you've got to be relatively happy with this time. Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean, he's on the plane either way. I mean, Fantastic swim from him. Uh, there's more names here. Jack McLaughlin looks really solid in the races he swam, the 400, the 800, and the 1500, qualifying for all three of them. Um, just He's got a fantastic technique, does Jack, actually. Another just a classic Australian distance swimmer who's got a fantastic technique. Uh, Madeline Goff, again, another fantastic technique, being a distance swimmer. Uh, in the 1500, the second fastest time this year, in a time of 1546.13. Again, an Australian record. So, you know, mm. plenty of swims. Okay, so next big talking point from Aussie Trials. I'm going to pick a bone with a newspaper, The Guardian. Yes. They put out an article, Mac Horton flops and misses 
defending his Olympic title in the 400 meters freestyle. Now, disappointing that Horton isn't there. I fully expected him to make this team. Maybe that was me just being a bit complacent and already putting him on the plane. Now, he isn't racing an individual at Tokyo. He's only going now for a relay for the 4x2, which is a bit of a surprise. But in no way, shape or form, did he flop. No, I was actually really angry with that title because it's far from a flop. You can't go the third fastest time in the world this year and call that a flop. Mm. He's gone a, he went a 3.43. Put that in any other country. Let's go back to America, shall we? The Americans are nowhere near that time in the men's no. 403. Absolutely nowhere near. Um, Kieran Bird went 3.46. So Max going nearly three seconds quicker. And so if, if Max done a flop, then the rest of the world are flopping badly. <laughs> I mean, I was really, really, up, uh, yeah, I was angry by that because yeah. he just got beaten on the day by two better swimmers. Incredible those, swims. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. 342 from Elijah Willington. Um, for me now, he's got to be favorite to win that just based off that time alone. I agree. Um, I, th- I think he drops it further. I think he goes down to a 341 well within his, his capabilities. I would have thought. Um, but yeah, I wasn't very happy with the, um, the Matt Horton media title from Guardian. Um, it's he's just, a fantastic it was swimmer. clickbaity. It was clickbaity yeah. for no reason whatsoever because, yeah, like you said, a 343, no mm. one in the world is going to say no to that. Yeah, yeah. It's just a, it's just a shame that um, Australia are normally very good at this race, especially with Thorpe being the very best. Mm. Uh, Hackett was obviously very good at it. Um, and it just carries on. It's just one of those events that Australia are always good at. Um, it's just unfortunate for Mac. I mean, there's no other words to say about it. I mean, it's, it's, you just to put it in, in perspective for kind of British listeners. It's just the same as Jimmy Guy missing out on the 200 free. Mm. Yeah. Because Jimmy went a one, what, 45, which was the fastest time he's done in a very long time. But he just got beaten by two guys who went a one forty four and are the first and second fastest in the world. I yep. mean, you don't see headlines written about Jimmy saying he flopped, do you? It's just no. the neg- the negative media connotations from that was completely unnecessary. Completely unnecessary. It was, especially when it's Matt Horton, who <clears throat> is an Australian legend. He he won the 400 free at Rio. I mm. mean, you, he's got to have some sort of respect on his name. He just absolutely does not deserve to have the word flop next to it because he didn't have the chance to defend his title. I'm glad mm. he's on the plane. He's, he's in a relay. It is, um, it's not great that he misses the, the 400 free individual, but he was beaten by two, two better guys on the day. And that's ultimately what it comes down to. Okay. So that's kind of the last negative point I want to take away from Australian trials. Let's, let's move on to two more swimmers who I'm really excited to see in Tokyo. Emma McKeon. In the 100 meters butterfly, he goes a 55.9. Now, with Showstrom being injured, we don't really know what sort of times she's going to come out with at Tokyo. There's not really any guide whatsoever. I think Emma might well be one to watch for for that gold medal. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. She's got a fantastic chance of uh, definitely meddling, certainly meddling. Um, and I think she's got a great chance of winning gold as well. Australian record for her, so it's a big PB, 55.9. Um, I just don't know who's, I don't know if Socham's going to be racing it. Honestly, I'm not so sure because okay, she she's not swimming butterfly yet, is she? Yeah, so I don't, she, I don't know if she's doing it. I mean, being what, five weeks, four weeks out now, um, is it worth we'll it? Is she, is, is she just going to do the 50 and 100 free? I'm not so sure. But uh, because of that, I suppose, gives Emma McEwen a better chance of uh, certainly meddling anyway. Mm. Um, yeah, 55.9 is a very, pretty good time. Very decent. And then Emma McEwen was in, in my personal opinion, the best race of Aussie trials, the 100 meters freestyle, because the depth, the depth that they have, we thought our four by two relay for the men's side in British swimming was deep as hell. This mm. is bonkers. I mean, what was it? The top four was sub 53. So you've got four women going 52 point. Yeah. I mean, that's, is that nailed on gold? Quite I think you had, I think you had six of them going underneath the qualification time. Yeah. Yeah. Mental, absolutely mental. And of course they're going to take all six because of course yeah. two, two of those girls, Bronte, Campbell being one of them didn't she make it fifth. for the individual. She came fifth or sixth. Yeah. One of them. Um, <laughs> so she's just going to be doing a heat swim. God, it's just mind boggling the depth 
um, of Australian sprint swimming right now, especially in and freestyle. A, and I of mean, course, just... Kate, Kate Campbell came second. Mm. She qualifies yeah. for the individual. I think she she very much wanted this one. You're, I'm watching it, and you're right. She definitely dies the last 15 meters of 100. She reminds me quite a lot of Manadu on the... Yeah. On that on that front, he he's brilliant at the fifty. He tries his hand at the hundred, and you're you watch him seventy five meters to go, and you're just like wow, he's looking good. And then oh god, wheels yeah. coming off. But she's there. She's qualified with Emma McEwen. And when you're saying that the top four went sub fifty three, she's not exactly going slow. Oh no, no no <laughs> chance. I mean, to, uh, what would I say? I think the world record is fifty one nine. Is that right from Socium? Something along those lines. It's fifty one point anyway. Maybe fifty one seven. So if you're able to go a 52 point low, um, got a great chance of meddling. Um, mm. Of course, being a sprint event, it's a little bit more, uh, might get it on the touch or longer fingernail. Um, but yeah, wow. I mean, she, she's qualified for a fourth Olympics, same as Emily Sebum as well. So that's an achievement mm. in itself. Yeah. Um, and I think she's going to win another Olympic medal with that four by one freestyle relay team. Oh, like I said, give them a gold, give mm. them the world record because they've won that. There's yes. no yeah. chance in hell that they lose that. If I had a yeah. mortgage, I'd probably put it on it. Do you reckon? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah probably. Oh, I, I'm not going to disagree with you. I mean, they both Emma and Kate again backed it up in the 53, which I believe was a, pretty much the last event. Was yeah, it was. Last event? Yeah. Or the 1500 men was the last event, but the 50 meet for the women, the 53 was the last event. Um, both of them pretty much at the same time, only 0.01 separating them. 23.9, which I believe is top two in the world right now as well. So, yeah. Great form for female sprinting over in australia and absolutely i mean that's those are all the names that you should pay attention to basically in tokyo i think Mm. there's there's they're taking a squad of 35 if i I am counting correctly i think 35 they're taking yeah those are the names to pay attention to katie McEwen, ariane titmus you've got kyle Chalmers, zach stupplety cook brendan smith matt temple mitch larkin um, Elijah Winnington, Emma McKeon, and Kate Campbell. Those are the big names to pay attention to. Some of their relays will be pretty strong as well. Um, some points of note from the whole meet itself, Dan, not related to Amazon. We've covered that. Mm. We could talk all day, but we won't. I think one point to take away that was brought up to us on Twitter is that Aussies notoriously race fast at home. So we might need to kind of curb expectations slightly, but with mm. the younger guns like Kaylee McEwen and Ariane Titmus, I'm not sure that's too much of a worry because this is their first Olympics. I think you're you're looking historically for that. Um, another thing I want to take away and British swimming do this, do this now, do this next Olympics is letting the swimmers know who's on the team the day it finishes straight after decisions really aren't that hard we predicted the team that is going to the olympics Mm. we pretty much got it within two swimmers it's not that hard to do you do not need to delay it by a week you can let them celebrate on poolside with their friends with their family in the stands do what australian swimming did it was incredibly classy it was. I tweeted about it and said it was inc- incredibly classy because, of course, you've got the parents on the side as well, so they can actually mm. join in in the celebrations. And it just builds a, a team cohesion in that moment where they've all got the same goal of making the Olympics. They've all done it. And so now they're going together as a team towards Tokyo. Um, why we don't do it baffles me. And it, it kind of annoys me a little bit as well. You <laughs> watch that team and they're all they're all happy, of course. They've got their like yellow jackets said, there, on. There were... There were moments we were watching it and the the Matt Wilson thing made us cry. I'm just yeah. like, that's what you want swimming to do. Yeah. Like, I don't no- want some announcement coming out 9 a.m. on a Wednesday when no one's paying attention to swimming. You've got all eyes on the sport now. Everyone's yeah. watched trials. And now yeah. it's the team now. I've got no idea why we had to wait like a week or so just to get the names that we kind of knew were going anyway. But well, the, the you're only kind of, people you're that, de- the you're only kind of people depriving gone, the swimmers. Yeah, the only people they got named for British for the British Olympic team at in that week delay were people who had gone faster than consideration times. There was no one else. It was just people who gone consideration times. No one who went a consideration time missed out. I mean, it it was basic logic. You should have just done it on the day when, like we said, everyone is watching this event. 
this is yep. a chance for maybe your young guys like Kieran Bird to push their name out slightly a little bit more. Yeah, building just, profiles. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, I don't understand it. And they made it in a it's, as a proper ceremony as well. Oh, it was great. Calling, it looked calling like graduation. The, it was literally like graduation. That's what <laughs> that's how I described it as well. Um, but that's how it should be. You, you've got to celebrate their achievements because making an Olympic team, especially for Australia, because it's tough in Australia. It's a mm. it's a big deal. You can see it's a big deal out there, um, and it should be made more of a bigger deal out here as well, mm. in Britain. I mean. Um, because I'm sure the Americans would do it as well, or the French, or whoever else. They would they would make a big deal of it, but we just don't. And it needs to change, honestly. I mean, we've got superstars in Nepal, and get them out there, celebrate them. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, the Australians. I've said it time and time again. They do it right. Every single bit mm. of it was done perfectly. Everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's very- why we. I think that's very much why we decided we wanted to do a review of Australian trials because oh. it's the gold standard. In terms yeah. of coverage, I know Americans in terms of excitement will get into that, and Omaha is just mind blowing. Mm. But the the whole meet, the way this was run, the way there was common sense when people just missed out because of extenuating circumstances, the swims, the swims were on fire, world records, yep. nine world leading times. You've got people coming back for their fourth Olympics. The coverage from Amazon, the list is endless. But this yep. is this is why we decided to do this podcast because it needs talking about. People in Britain need to be made aware. This is how it could be. Pe- that people do it better. People mm-hmm. do it a lot better. And this is how it should be. And British trials were faster than this in a lot of races. Yep. But this is going to get a whole lot more excitement because of the yeah. way it was done. And that's the maybe the unfortunate side for British swimming because you might have the British swimmers look at that and you think, oh, that could be us. We could mm. be in the spot. They could be on Amazon. They could be having yeah. a documentary about us. You've, yeah. you've watched it. Yeah. Oh, a very good documentary. Going way off topic here, but it's a really good documentary. I think it was four or five episodes. I was stuck to it. Honestly, I was stuck to it. 45 minutes each episode. I was there for three or four hours, just sat there watching it. But um, yeah, I looking at it, I'm sort of jealous of how it is in Australia. And I hope mm. British Swimming are watching and thinking we could do that. And they're right. Yeah. You could do it just yeah. act on it so yeah hopefully fingers crossed it does we'll change see. we'll see in the future so that just about rounds up this kind of bonus podcast for everyone like we said these are the names that you want to pay attention to there's a there's a big squad of 35 we aren't going to go through every race we haven't gone through every race every name but we've given you the ones to pay attention to in tokyo especially the ones who are probably threats to british swimming i think yeah. we, we have that slight bias in our minds when we are reviewing this um but all in all, Australian trials was brilliant. I cannot wait for Tokyo now. It's only four weeks away, five weeks away. Yeah, four or five. I don't know where we are right now. But <laughs> it's it's close. It's it's somewhere close. But um, yeah, I mean, like I said right at the very beginning, I'm so excited for Tokyo now. And of course, in the next couple of days, we're going to talk about the American trials as well, which I'm sure will be just as exciting. Mm. Um, I actually haven't watched too much of it. I've just watched little bits of it of big swims. So I'm actually going to have a a deep dive into it for the next two days. But uh, yes, very exciting times now. Yep. So we'll be back in a few days time. Like we said, Tokyo coverage ramping up. We'll be talking about American trials. So if you have enjoyed this podcast, if you've enjoyed any of our other interviews with British swimmers, please leave us a review on Apple podcasts or subscribe to us on all of your podcast providing platforms, as well as YouTube. Me and Dan will be back with you very, very soon. We're super excited. If you can tell by how much we've been talking about this Australian trials, which has nothing to do with British swimming, but we're, we're excited about swimming. Swimming fans first and foremost, as we always say, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's, if it looks on telly and if it does well for the sport, then we're absolutely behind it. Brilliant. So from myself, Scott, and from Dan, we will see you guys in a couple of days time. And we'll catch you on the next one, guys. You've been listening to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast with Scott and Dan. We want to thank you for joining us and invite you to subscribe to the show as well as checking out the Propulsion Swimming YouTube channel for weekly tutorials and videos to get your swimming fix. We will be back next week. Until then, we'll catch you on the next one.